everybody. This is Captain Fred, your host for Aviation Theater and a proud member of the San Diego Aerospace Museum, the first place to visit when you come to San Diego. We have a good program for you today, and we'll get started right after this important message. Today, we're in Sorrento Valley, and we're visiting with John Ryan of the Hang Gliding Center. Welcome to Aviation Theater. Nice to meet you. Would you tell our audience a little bit about your Hang Gliding Center? Okay. Well, as far as um, you can see here, we're setting up all of our hang gliders. Uh, we're out here in uh, a city-owned uh, park called Penasquitas Canyon. And um, we come out here and train usually once a week. And uh, as you can see, we've got about six students out here today. And you're going to watch them go from flat ground flying right on up to, uh, oh, about 100 to 150 feet up on the hill. And they'll be working on their basic flying, uh, very fundamental flying, before they go off to mountains where they'll, they'll fly thousands of feet off the ground. Now, you said you're here every weekend. Is it both Saturdays and Sundays? Usually Saturday we train here in the canyon, and then Sunday is designated for mountain flying. So a lot of the students that you see here in just a few days, uh, they'll be moving off of our training hill and going out to uh, get their first mountain flights, which are about a 1,000 or more feet of altitude. So you fly here on Saturdays for the beginners, mm -hmm and then mountain flying on Sundays for the more advanced students. Where do you do the mountain flying? Well, we've got about six sites in San Diego. Uh, our two premier sites are in the Laguna Mountains. Um, one is um, off of Highway 8, and it's called Buckman Springs Exit. And uh, our other one is off of Sunrise Highway. There's a small little turnout called Kawimi Point, and that overlooks the Borrego Desert. Um, so those two are our premier sites, but like everybody in San Diego knows, there's a lot of mountains, and so um, we do have about four other sites that we go to. Now, I know that we're on, is it federal or state land here? This is a, this is a joint county-city park uh, called Penasquitas Preserve, and um, it goes for about eight miles, and it's very similar to Tecolote Canyon in that the park starts at the edge of the canyon and includes all the lower portion of the, the canyon. Okay. I was going to ask if uh, the public could come and watch, but, but they can't because this is uh, government land. But what about your mountain flying? Uh, would it be possible for them to come and watch your mountain flying? Oh, uh, sure. Anytime uh, people can call our shop, um, which um, you know we have open like Wednesday through Saturday. And they can call and find out where we're going on the, like, Sunday or other days of the week for mountain flying. And they're, they're more than welcome to come along. And, and also, as far as out here in the canyon, everybody's welcome to come out and watch. Um, and uh, we'll give them a good briefing on hang gliding. So they could come and watch here? Sure. Yes, sir. Um, they're welcome to come out here uh, throughout the day when we're training. In fact, later today, as uh, the day progresses, you'll see a lot of people who will show up. A lot of people ride mountain bikes and horseback riders out here. And they'll come out and they'll stay off to the sides and watch the hang gliding. So they can come and watch here in Sorrento Valley, or they can come and watch in the mountains, or both. That's correct. They can do either one. We'd be happy to have them. That's a lot of the ways that uh, new students are found. They come out and they, they get introduced to the sport, um, and then they decide to take lessons and continue. Well, let's see what's going on here this morning. These hang gliders are just about assembled, and John is going to show the students how to fly in a hang glider. Let's watch. As you can see today, um, we have four gliders being set up right now. Um, these students are all on their second uh, through third day of flying. So they know how to set up the glider pretty much. Um, the instructor needs to 
keep an eye on them every once in a while to make sure they do it right. That's one of the things about hang gliding as opposed to other aviation. Uh, you have to set up the aircraft each time that you go out to fly. So there's a, a definite uh, way to set the aircraft up and break it down at the end of the day. As you can see, all the gliders are kind of a delta shape, uh, kind of a triangular shape. Um, you can see the gentleman pulling the wing out now on the white and blue glider. Uh, he's uh, going to finish up on the glider setting it up. Now, I had mentioned earlier that uh, the triangle A-frame uh, is about as far as you can go for strength. Would you comment on that? Uh, yes. Uh, you can see by the nature of hang gliders, they have a leading edge and a uh, crossbar. We'll show you that a little later up close. And a triangle, which is below the wing, which uh, is used for structural integrity. And also, it's what you steer the aircraft with. Uh, John, would you mention how you transport hang gliders? Uh, sure. The, all the hang gliders come with their own transportation bag. Um, as you can see, it uh, breaks the aircraft down to about 18 feet. And it's like a long tube, uh, which can easily be stored in someone's garage and transported on almost any vehicle. Uh, about the smallest vehicle we've seen it transported on is a Honda Civic. Uh, and uh, within about 15 minutes, the pilot can set up his aircraft and have it ready for flying. Would you tell our audience what those men are doing? Uh, yes, what they're doing right now, they're taking and putting the preformed ribs, which can be compared to battens on a sailboat. Um, they're putting those into the wing uh, to form a true airfoil. And um, in a moment, when we take a closer look, uh, you'll be able to see how this very flexible aircraft, uh, fabric-wise, is going to be set up. And it's going to become very rigid with the uh, preformed airfoil ribs put in it. Now, the fabric is, uh, I assume, ripstock, the same as parachutes? Uh, yeah, the fabric is a usually a three to four ounce Dacron cloth, which is DuPont's trade name for polyester. Uh, it's um, a lot uh, stronger and built a lot differently than your polyester pants, but it's the same fabric that's used on sailboats uh, and um, windsurfers. After he has it ready for flight, uh, what does he do? Well. After he gets the aircraft set up, he's going to do a pre-flight, a walk around, as some people in aviation call it. He's going to check to make sure all the components are set up properly, uh, all battens are, are properly hooked up. He's also going to check to make sure there are no kinks or tangles with the cables. Everything, as far as cabling goes, is running fair. In other words, from each attachment point, it runs free and clear and doesn't get wrapped around another cable. Uh, that's a safety thing before you launch off of a mountain or even a small hill. You want to make sure that the aircraft is properly ready to fly. In parachute jumping, uh, two people check each other. Uh, would that procedure lend itself to hang gliders? In some ways it does. Um, with hang gliding, uh, we always like to mention that the pilot is in command, but before he launches, there's always someone there to help him out, to lend a hand. And what they do is a, basically a static uh, check of the harness and inspection of the glider before they fly. OK, we have four gliders here. Will there be uh, four people flying? Well, actually, we've got at least one more glider to set up today. and. Uh, There'll be five uh, pilots out here flying, um, and we'll introduce you to them uh, shortly. John is going to show us the various components of a hang glider. As we are standing in front of the glider right now, this area is the nose of the aircraft. The center tube here is referred to as the keel. And you can see going between each wing is a bar which goes across called the crossbar. The leading edge on this particular glider, being white, is composed not only of the fabric in the area of the aircraft, but also inside there's a tube, an aluminum tube, which runs from the nose all the way out to the wingtip. To support the wing, 
and also for steering, there is a triangle which is composed of two down tubes and a control bar. For the training today, you see we have our safety wheels on the control bar. That's just in case our students don't have the perfect landing. Now the control bar and the down tubes also offer support to the aircraft through the cable bracing. You can see that there are two cables which run to the nose. There are also two cables which go from the control bar back to the tail. There's also a side cable which supports the wing. And that's basically all the wire bracing on the lower portion of the wing. So we refer to all of these common wires as flying wires. Uh, John, I notice that that side cable is loose. Is it supposed to be that way? Uh, well, right now, because the aircraft is not in flight, having a lifting force underneath the wing, the cable is going to be loose, but all of our top cables, which we refer to as landing wires, um, are offering support. You can see this cable here is very taut right now. And it's supporting the wing because there's no lifting action su supporting the wing by the air. But in flight, this cable becomes very taut. Also, you can see through the lower portion of the wing those ribs that we referred to earlier. They're a stiffening device to add rigidity to the sail so that it helps in performance. And also you can see the curved shape of the wing, which uh, adds to more aerodynamic uh, performance of the aircraft. And in a moment, we're going to put this aircraft on the simulator over here, and we're going to actually show you how to fly before we ever leave the ground. I, I noticed uh, just when you moved the wing that that cable got tight. Uh, let's demonstrate that for the audience. Sure. When, there, when the aircraft is flying, producing lift, you can see the cable becomes very taut, lifting forces being from underneath the wing. Thank you. And now I think we're about ready to see some actual flying. Oh, no, wait a minute. First, they go on one of your creations called a simulator. Would you tell our audience about that? Sure. What we're going to do with this aircraft is actually suspend it in a simulator. And then our students can get into the aircraft and actually practice flying while they're still on the ground. Uh, this helps. Um, in their uh, actual flying later on off of our training hill. Try this. Also, we're going to do this today. Go ahead and uh, let's get a mental picture of what we're doing. We're flying in, we're getting level, our hands are comfortable. Right when you're starting to kind of slow down, get close to the ground, just slide your hands up a little bit. Yeah. Don't grab so much, just kind of scoot them up and flare. Yeah. What that does is it's allowing you to push because this thing is it, the down tubes are sloped back. Actually, it's almost like cocking your hand. If your hands are down here, they're already pretty much extended. Okay? But if you slide your hands up slightly, it allows you to cock your arm better, and then you can just push up to the sky for the flare. Good. All right. Yep, you're done. Uh, what we're going to do now is go ahead and move over to our slope, and you're going to see some actual flights. We have concluded the simulator part, and the hang gliders are now lining up in position. First one, I think, is ready to go. It's the blue, gold, and white one. John is giving some final instructions, and it looks like he's about ready to go. This will be his, the, his first flight. ready for a short hop. Actually, that's what the Wright brothers did when they made their first flights at Kitty Hawk. They made flights of uh, 80 feet, 90 feet, 120 feet. They were actually short hops. And this is what the hang glider student does here. They start out with short hops, which is exactly what the baby bird does when it leaves the nest. He's down the hill. And airborne. 
Nice glide. Very nice. And landing in the tall, soft grass. Not bad at all. His first flight is finished. So now he's bringing his hang glider back up the hill to try again. Notice that he just picks it up and walks off with it. We're ready for the next flight now. If the camera will swing left, it's the solid white hang glider. He's a little higher up the hill. Standing, testing the wind, and there he goes. Very nice. They're shooting at that orange cone, and he landed in the area, crossed the road. Okay, next one is ready. And there he goes. Very nice, a stand-up landing. Good flight, good flare, good landing. The red, yellow, and white glider is being pulled. See those wheels rolling? He's just pulling it along the road, like a kid with his wagon. John is attaching a walkie-talkie to the harness, and he gives instructions while the student is flying. On the last flight, uh, I could hear him saying, good, good, ready for landing, now flare, flare. There she goes. Good flight and a good landing. The wind is a little bit rougher. It's, it's starting to heat up. The sun is out. It's burned the early morning fog off. Good flight, good flare, good landing. We had four first flights. Deanna is pulling her glider along the road. And the white glider is ready now. There he goes. Good flare. John is giving instructions constantly through his walkie talkie. All the way down, he was saying left, left, right, flare, flare hard, constantly giving instructions. I would not carry the hang glider. I would pull it behind me like a wagon. Okay, our next glider is ready. One of the biggest problems they have here is uh, bicycle riders stopping in the landing zone to watch. And they constitute 
a hazard. Clear. John was saying, not yet, not yet, now flare. Still giving instructions. What you did wrong or what you could do better. Ready for the next flight. Look at the ribbon on the cable. You can see how much the wind has picked up since we arrived. Nothing wrong with that. Clear. There he goes. Very good. Good flight. Moderate flare. And he chose to land with the wheels rather than standing up. That's the pilot's option. Clear. Launching. Not bad, we've got a crosswind, and if you notice, he had to keep turning to the left because we have a, a wind coming from the ocean. We're within two miles of the beach, and uh, it's starting to pick up now, so they have a left crosswind that they have to correct for. You notice that he has to make a left turn because we've got a crosswind. Stand up landing. We've got a couple of jets from Miramar passing over. Launching. Notice he has to make a left turn because we have a crosswind out of the west. Okay, stand up landing. I'll start walking, jogging, turning my hands, and flying away. He's flying hands off. Notice he moves his body. Turns left for the crosswind, flares, and makes a stand-up landing right on the road. Some more jets from Miramar passing over. Very nice. Notice that he flared 
and did a stand-up landing. Hang gliders come from the delta wing, the triangular shape, which was actually designed for the space program. Originally, when they were designing a, a spaceship that could come back to Earth and be used over and over again, they had in mind a metal hang glider for the astronaut to ride in. It didn't work out, but it, uh, it did usher in a new generation of hang gliders. Originally, you know, uh, John J. Montgomery flew in a hang glider. It wasn't this shape, but it was a hang glider. Otto Lilienthal in Germany flew in a hang glider. And uh, Arvel and Wilbur Wright flew in hang gliders before they attached a motor and made it into an airplane. So the delta wing, or the triangular shape that we're seeing here in hang gliders, uh, actually is a second generation of what Montgomery, Lilienthal, and the Wright brothers designed. And he's ready to go. Again, we have bicycle riders standing right there in the landing zone. That forces the hang glider student to land someplace else. We've been visiting today with John Ryan of the Hang Gliding Center in Sorrento Valley, telling you about beginning hang gliders. This is Captain Fred, your host for Local Aviation Theater, telling the story of local aviation, past and present. Happy landing.